Welcome to the Vocal Studio Singapore's podcast, Find Your Inner Voice. We talk about music, songs, vocal coaching, and the life around it. My name is Nisha, and this is Heidi next to me. Yes. We are the coaches at the Vocal Studio, and today we'll be talking a little bit about Malay music and um, Coach Heidi's take on it. So, to start off, hi Heidi. Hi, Nisha. How are you how today? Are you? I'm good. How good. Are you? I'm good. Thank you. Great. Yeah, so we're going to talk about your genre specialization today. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about it. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I just want to say I'm really excited actually to share more about Malay music, mm-hmm. Malay traditional and also how it goes into the pop music. Yeah. Because if we are sharing about culture, then we, we have to somehow go back in time and mm-hmm. see how it influences our current generation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's so where right. do we start? Let's start mm-hmm. with um, with culture, which is what you just talked about. Yes. Can you tell us, um, can you give us a little brief introduction about Malay music? Okay, sure. Um, okay, when we talk about culture, mm-hmm. right, Malay music specifically, we look at the words, which is Malay and music. So how are we, as Malay, um, we, what kind of people are we within our family, mm-hmm. within our community? Yeah. The society and the world so it's best for us to look into how we go through our daily lives starting off with our family from there we can start to understand what kind of people we are also how yeah. we practice music mm-hmm. and how we because yeah. how we practice music is also because of how we live our life yeah. so the lifestyle and the music goes together yeah exactly yeah and Malay people we are close to the nature, mm-hmm. right? We, we are naturalistic people, artistic, and would we consider creative people who, who love to share about family, about love, um, and also historical events. And we would also inject some things about religion yeah. and wisdom, yeah. right? So the way we share it is being categorized to many different Mm-hmm. styles or yeah. many different presentation in music so if you take a look about at, at, at today's culture how we consume music and how we present music is being westernized yeah right do you agree yeah. like even for gospel right yeah. it's being westernized um, because of the western culture how yeah. influential they are correct you know yeah which is really good it contributes to the growth of music yeah. and everyone every different religion, race and everything. Mm-hmm. So let's take a look at what and how we consume music today. Yeah. Uh, first of all, how we consume music. Spotify, mm-hmm. radio, TVs. Yeah. It's very West- westernized, right? Yeah. Um, but back then, how did we start to pre- mm-hmm. perform, present music? Yeah. We, we present it in, in a form of uh, social congregation, events. Dance, uh, celebration. Yeah. Uh, and it brings me over to how we present music over in the fifteenth century, I think. Yeah, where the Southeast Asia region is, in, in particularly in Malay, Malaysia or Malacca, mm-hmm. it's being ruled by the sultans. So it started off as a celebration of uh, the Malays who who crowns their leaders and, and perform this music in a royal way. Is yeah. It, is it a royal yeah, way? to the royalties. Yeah, to the royal yeah. royalties. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and we are very, very simple community and, and race, actually. Mm-hmm. Because how we live our life is just simply by with our, um, spending time with our family, go to work, go back home, and share yeah. teachings and wisdom. So, yeah, so back to the royal uh, coronation yeah. how we perform the music is with instruments like rebana which we have two types wow. rebana is okay. drums okay in english yeah. we have that drums right yes. jazz drums pop drums yeah rebana is drums in malay but the way it is being played is not with your with sticks mm-hmm. but with your hands right so we have that rubana. Mm-hmm. Next is we have the seruling, which is the flute, mm-hmm. and it sounds 
in, in Malay it sounds sayu. Sayu means close to the heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the next one is gendang. Mm-hmm. Gendang. Yeah, okay. gendang is the bigger one. Right. Gendang is. The and what is that? Uh, it's sim- somehow okay. It sounds it sounds like boom, deep. Okay. And huge. Right. Like the robano, it sounds it sounds thinner. So they are both form of drums. Yeah, they are. Okay. Percussions. Percussions. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, see yeah. how simple it is yeah. when we present our songs, yeah. our our music, which is called the nobat. There's a term for it. Right. If you perform for for the royal mm-hmm. family, uh, it's called nobat, and these are the specific instrumentations that is being incorporated. Okay. To perform in wow. music. That's cool. Yeah, and this actually is before the Europeans yeah. came over to to the region, mm-hmm. Southeast Asia, to Malaysia, to Indonesia, to Singapore. Uh, namely, I think the main Europeans who came over to this region were the Portuguese, mm-hmm. um, wow. and they they started to bring in their their instruments, mm-hmm. okay, such as the violin, mm-hmm. ukulele, accordion, harmonium, yeah. uh, and also some double bass for Western double bass also because it's it was part of their musical culture. So when it came here, um, it influenced this. Malay group, Malay groups of composers, mm-hmm. which at that point of time they don't really know how to read music, but perform music. So right. they were influenced by these Portuguese and also I forgot to mention Arabic people mm-hmm. who came over yeah. for for to 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 teach religion and practice their trades and all right. So the uh, Malay composers start to learn to read and write music and also incorporate all these. Mm-hmm. Uh, musical elements, instrumentations into into Malay music that we heard of today, yeah. or that we know of today, mm-hmm. which is called the Malay traditional music. Yeah, uh, there are actually how many parts? Um, how many genres of Malay traditional music? They, I, if I can name a few, it's keroncong. Keroncong consists of the ukulele, mm-hmm. the, and it sounds like reggae. It's right. the Malay reggae, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That is Uh huh. It consists of yeah, ukulele, guitar, seruling, violin, and the drums, the rubana, and kendang. Yeah. Nice. That's a lot of good information. I think we've learned a lot already. Yeah. About the different um traditions and instruments and things like that. But um, can you tell us a little bit about um, the influences maybe or an influence. That you feel impacted the kind of music that maybe you do today or you listen to. Okay, I would consider myself as not too not too old, not too young. Also, some some just nice in the middle. Would you after... like to tell us your age? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> 20, 29, oh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 29 soon. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just nice uh, for me to grow up and listen to someone who is very very influential mm. in Malay music. Yeah, who was prominent, very prominent yeah. in the fifties and the sixties. Because yeah. he started all this music and film, mm-hmm. uh, and and he made it popular for and also combined all these elements of right. traditional music, and and uh, Malay traditional music, mm-hmm. and European music, as well as the Arabic music into one. And how he does that is by not just incorporating the musical part of it, the, yeah. the arrangement of it, mm. but also the pantun uh, or the poem. Okay. Because, like I said, we are naturally people of love. We yeah. tend to write. We tend to write. Yeah. That's what just it yeah. just comes as a human thing. Uh huh. Yeah. And the reason why we write is because we want to share wisdom to right. the upcoming generations yeah. to teach them about our yeah. culture. That's yeah. the whole idea of writing, yeah. right? And teaching, so uh, also to share about love. Yeah. So when Piramli incorporate music, Malay music, European music into one form of music, which I will sh- hopefully be able to demonstrate to you mm-hmm. later or show on YouTube, sure. uh, video on YouTube. Yeah. Um, he fuse poem or poetry into Malay music. Right. That is how special it is right now, up till today. Mm-hmm. If you listen to Malay songs right now, we. Still have that poetry in in our song, even if it sounds yeah. modern. Mm-hmm. Because the only time when yeah. we want to sound modern is because we want to um, yeah. stay relevant. Correct. Yeah. Or really, that's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. the but the, the the root is the root of Malay arts and Malay music mm-hmm. is poetry. Yeah. And do you poetry. do that in your music? Uh 
I'm not the best poem <laughs> or poetic person. Yeah. I try, yeah. and I believe that we all grow as we try. Mm-hmm. So no matter how good it right. is, you just keep writing and keep yeah. trying. That's yeah. It. Yeah. Mm. And I that's very true. Yeah, speaking of my songs, I did try to incorporate love stories mm-hmm. for you in my writings and right. also de- do what Priyamri was trying to do. Yeah. But I wasn't yeah. as good as, as he. She was the Sunniman I mean, Ago. You're right? on your way. Yeah. Um, hopefully, <laughs> yeah hopefully do you only write a do you only write love songs? No, uh, actually not really. Mm-hmm. I wrote, write love songs. I sometimes write about inspiration okay. and relation with spirituality, yeah. spiritualism, but in a context of love. Yeah. So that people can understand. Correct. If not, if not yeah. we're just writing to ourselves. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a very fine line between um, a personal journey and a personal journey that somebody can else somebody else can relate to. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's good. That's that's that, that is the whole point of doing yeah, music. Anyway. We course. want to be relate, yeah. be relatable. We yeah. want people to relate to us and that's right. Enjoy the yeah. music. That's true. That's good. That's really good so far. So, uh, speaking of Pantun, right? Yes. Yeah. Speaking of Pantun, right? Um, there are many different types of Pantuns that mm-hmm. is incorporated into Malay mm-hmm. songs. Um, the the way it is being presented in the music uh, is through Donang Sayang, through Bangsawan, and also Dikir Barat. Dikir Barat was right. where I was from okay. when, I, um, when I was in primary school and secondary school. Mm. It was practiced for um for the community to celebrate right so we write pantuns which means literally means verse in english mm-hmm. um in in four lines right lines of four and mm-hmm. it unfolds the story throughout the lines right so that's how special the pantun is if you yeah. want to know more about it mm-hmm. then maybe you can reach out to me and i can like, yeah like show you, you what yeah. it is all about yeah um without elaborating it here on yeah. the podcast because yeah it's too long mm-hmm. <laughs> so Okay, what about the other two that you mentioned? Yeah, the other two is Donang Sayang and Bangsawan. So Donang Sayang is the way it... Okay, this pantun is been presented in three mm-hmm. ways. Mm-hmm. The first one is Donang Sayang, which literally means... Dondang means singing in a melodious way. Sayang means love. Singing love in a melodious way. So that's right. Donang Sayang. Wow. And it's a combination of Chinese and Malay culture. Mm. And the way they practice it is... Uh, it was used by the Pranakan uh, culture as and when, like during weddings or any social gatherings. So that's the particular form yeah. of expression and presentation. The okay. next one is Bangsawan. Bangsawan is quite special because it's the beginning mm-hmm. of Malay pop music. Right. It's opera. It's Malay opera. Mm. And also, um, the way it's being presented is just like a musical where you have dance, you have singing. Um, what's the other one? Acting. Acting. <laughs> yeah, so there, there you Acting. go. Yeah. Acting, singing and dance. Yeah. Which was these, these three forms form of art. Mm. Influence Pirambi to write films, right. music. So that, yeah. that is his influence. It's, yeah. it, it's the root of mm-hmm. everything. So, root of uh, Malay culture. And uh, special thanks also to the uh, Indian who people from India who brought over this culture into this region, yeah. Southeast Asia region. Because, okay, uh, okay basically, Bangsa One means Bangsa. Bangsa is nation. Mm-hmm. Bangsa One means people of the nation. Okay. Bangsa One. Right. So orang bangsawan, a uh, people of the nation, just as the name suggests, it's about patriotism mm. and about nationalism. Mm-hmm. That that's it. That's bangsawan, yeah. right? Okay. So the next one is dikir barat. Dikir yeah. barat means dikir is zikir, chanting, chanting of religious information or religious beliefs. Right. But when you say dikir barat. Barat means West. Mm-hmm. Dikir from the West. It was actually a form of uh, performance from Thailand. So okay. that, that part of the re- region yeah. in Thailand was very spiritual kind. Yeah. But I'm not sure if wow. it's Muslim or not. But yeah. when it goes over, cross over into Malaysia, yeah. it started in Kelantan. So mm-hmm. the Kelantan people formed this Dikir mm-hmm. from the West yeah. into an art form to celebrate wow. their successes. Wow, it has really a lot of influences from many different places yeah yeah we're touching on every single country and different races yes. and mm-hmm. everywhere in asia yeah. that's amazing so how how has it influenced you today personally mm. in um in the songs that you sing or the songs that you you choose to maybe even teach your students uh okay songs that influence me on my music mm-hmm. i would say because if you want to be looking at the past, then it's too much, right? Yeah. It's always how what I grow up with. Yeah. So what do I grow up with? 
um, my family, my my father, my mother, we always um, switch on this uh, CD that we have, mm-hmm. and this CD was actually a film produced, written, uh, acted, written, acted, composed, right, everything by Piramli. Right. So I grew yeah. up watching that. Yeah. And uh, wow. I think because of that, this melody all come into my head, and it's it's really natural for me to just come up with a melody. Yeah. And uh, and probably lyrics of poetry. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So he's your goes. he's your biggest influence. Not just mine, actually. Yeah. The whole community yeah. in Malay in Indonesia yeah. in Malaysia, especially in Malaysia, because yeah. that is. If you if you take a look currently, Singapore and Malaysia, Malaysia has a wider audience yeah. for Malay music. Uh, yeah. Initially, it was Singapore. Singapore was the main hub. Mm-hmm. Um, but because Malaysia and Singapore separated, we all had to move to Malaysia. The productions back then in Singapore, which is Jalan Ampas, mm-hmm. where we record the films and music, right, all goes to wow. shifted to Malaysia. So. so what about students or just people out there listening that want to pursue mm-hmm. Malay traditional music? What advice can you give them? Is it easy to pick it up as something that is a new genre? Uh, in terms of picking it up, let's talk about the voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So picking it up and being able to sing Malay traditional music. Yeah. The way it is sung is melismatic. It's it's called the melismatic singing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, there's there's a lot of uh, chromatic approach to all the notes, and it can come from any direction actually. Yeah. If you analyze it technically, it's quite hard to execute. Mm-hmm. You you are either born with it, you have the talent, yeah. or just don't have it. But if wow. even if you just if you don't have it, yeah, if you practice, it may come, it may not come. So yeah. just put your effort. A little in. bit like jazz, huh? Speaking of that, <laughs> it is jazz. It yeah. Is, yeah, you're right. You're you're right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it is because yeah. why? Um, donang sayang. Donang yeah. sayang means it's it's just like the blues. Speaking mm-hmm. of love, sharing of love stories, right? Just yeah. like the blues, where where mm-hmm. the, I would say mm-hmm. black, uh, community. Mm-hmm was facing some hardship, right? Yeah, like the Malays, we face uh, things like love, uh, family and all. So it started from Donang Sayang and then Donang Sayang is the blues. Mm-hmm. And then from Donang Sayang, Asli came about. Asli is jazz. Right. Where you actually sing it in, in an improvisational manner and mm-hmm. very intricate and mm. Melodious. Mm-hmm. So that's Asli is the Malay jazz. Yeah. Donang Sayang is the Malay blues. That's, wow. that's it. And how you perform it? You yeah. Know? <laughs> sure. Quatrains. Jazz. Just mm-hmm. quat Yeah. So how you perform Malay Asli? Quat- quatrains. If I can recall, I think it's with the Rabana, Gong, Seruling, Violin. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Four. Is and there a specific quartet that you aware mm. of that you might want to recommend? Oh wow. Mm, actually it's it's right now I think it's it has expanded. Mm-hmm. And I can think of one band currently yeah. that is that is performing Malay traditional music, but it's not just a quartet. Yeah. They, they grew into okay. into so called a Malay big band. Yeah. Uh, wow. I think they, they are called Alto Aura. Uh, Alto Aura. Okay. A L T. We can leave it in the Aura. description. Yeah you can. Yeah. I know the singer. Yeah. And he will. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, and also Great. speaking of po- okay, back to poetry. Mm-hmm. Poetry. Um, in Malay asli, poetry, right? Pretty much all of the songs are written in poems. Yeah. Pantun. So, in asli, usually we have duets, mm-hmm. where this the Mal- the the female singer would. Um, and the Malay, uh, and the male singer and the ma- yeah. female singer buys and sells the verses in an improvised way. I'm not sure how they do it, but right. it's really interesting to mm-hmm. to see. And yeah. they communicate in melodies and so it's like a call and answer. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I think we wow. we have another podcast about that. Yeah. And the song title is called Grindam Jiwa. Okay. We have Hasha on it and oh. we'll see how nice. it turns out. Okay. Yeah. So those of you who are interested in, I guess the vocal style. Yeah. Yeah. The, the vocal style of singing Asli songs sounds like. Yeah. Um, if I can demonstrate right now. Mm-hmm. Try. 
Tuai padi antara masa We have that Sa Eso yeah. jangan Layu layuan Intai kami Antara nama Eso jangan Rindu Something like that Yeah, yeah that was good uh, Woo! <laughs> I had practiced that yeah, so far, but you see good. how hard it is to mm-hmm. sing these songs, yeah. especially when you've you've yeah. you've been singing like English, uh, right. blues, and all. Yeah. So it requires you time Definitely. over and over again yeah. to practice. Yeah. Yeah. As per any genre, mm-hmm. so yes, that's it's, really it's, it's, yeah. It's any genre. Yeah. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. So if you could leave us with one thing, maybe mm-hmm. um about whether is it your experience or something you might want to leave with maybe some of the students who are watching or mm-hmm. just people out there, what is something you want to let us know? Um, actually, if you want to start singing, I would say you have to listen more <laughs> before yeah, you start singing. I, I agree. That, that is I the agree. best thing that you can actually do yeah. because uh, if you yeah. grow up with, I mean, I mean, take a look at people who who grew up listening or performing. Uh, for example, let's take the simplest example that I can think of right now is Bruno Mars. Yeah. He, he's the way his music is right now is because of um, because of who? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah. That's the. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Michael Biggest Jackson. Yeah. Who else? Elvis Presley. Mm-hmm. If you watch his videos, yeah. he was dancing like Elvis mm. because he his parents were were performers also. And the way he was brought up was just with music. Yeah. And then he grew up becoming a music man. Correct. So listen yeah. more. Yeah. Not just listen practice. More. Yeah. Listen first and then practice because mm-hmm. I find that sometimes we all. Uh, try to practice something even before we listen. Yeah, so, yes, that's listening very is, true. Yeah. Is m- the most important thing. Yeah, most in everything. Thing. Yeah. In communication. <laughs> yeah, completely. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much yeah, for letting you. us know about <laughs> the entire history of Malay traditional music. Yeah, hopefully. How it hopefully influenced you. Right. Yeah, so it really was very insightful, and I think a lot of people who are probably listening or watching this. Mm gathered a lot of information from it yeah, so, so if you want to find out more you can always come down to the vocal studio um, we are open through the week and coach Heidier is here um, as one of our coaches to coach you in Malay traditional music or even any genre that you are interested in he is here for you guys to to gain to more knowledge from yeah mm-hmm. so um, if you have any questions you can contact us if not we hope you enjoyed today's podcast have a great week and we'll see you soon all right